Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. Danny's taking care of a little uh, technical issues. We've been having problems with our live stream on Facebook for the last few weeks. So he's gonna be joining me just a second once he's assured that all the issues are under control. Uh, we're going to be chatting about a few things at the top of the show, um, sharing our new Discord um, online chat channel, and I'll be answering some questions live near the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can enter it into the comments at any time, wherever you watch the show, either on Facebook or YouTube. And Danny is kindly requesting for any questions just so he can spot them quickly to either uh, type your question in all capital letters or to put a, a little question mark before uh, your question. Let me Hello. get comfy. Hello, Danny. How you doing? <laughs> so we meet again. All right, so the first order of business is the Rockstar Bag Sew Along is starting right now over in the Facebook group. Michelle Graham is hosting the Sew Along and if you're interested in participating, there will be a manageable set of tasks every week. And Michelle will also be posting pattern hacks as she always does. So check the link in the description to take you to Michelle's original post in the Facebook group. Um, her post includes the schedule for the sew along so that you know what to expect as far as the dates and um, the assignments for each week. Um, and the first week is sort of an extended period just to give you a little bit of extra time to gather your supplies just in case you're ordering anything online or need to get um, a few extra things like hardware or interfacing. So um, what else What else is on my um, list for today? I wanted to share my progress for the Christmas cheer quilt along that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I keep all my stuff uh, in this really fun binder that I found. So I've got all of my uh, instructions for the quilt along in the binder and I also I picked up from the same pattern designer um, a Halloween quilt which I'm not sure I'm not going to have it done before Halloween this year but I have everything in the binder and the first week's task was uh, like candy cane blocks so I've, I completed five of those this past week I did two foundation paper piece star blocks and these are my two blocks so I was very pleased that I got um, more or less the uh, the joins where uh, the corners of the stars lined up. So I was pretty happy with that. Next week we're working on Christmas presents for Christmas present blocks. So I'm excited to get going with the quilt along. Looking at the whole quilt, it looked really daunting. Like, oh gosh, there's so much going on with the quilt. But um, when you look at e each week's task for uh, the quilt along broken down, it seems completely manageable. So I'm very excited about that. I also wanted to share my friend Anne Anne owns a quilt shop in Wisconsin called Stitch Supply Company. I linked to Anne's shop in the description. She's uh, still shipping online orders as always. And it was a really fun sewing notion um, metal box. And it Anne had it personalized with our last name on it. It says Lawson Sewing Company. Same thing on the front. And the inside was really fun because it's got a tray at the top and then some dividers on the inside. So I haven't decided yet what special things are going inside this, but I thought it was a really thoughtful gift and it kind of came out of nowhere. I saw the, the big package uh, with the return address from Stitch Supply Company and I was racking my brain because it was quite a large box. Uh, what did I order and, and uh, how much fabric? Because the box was rather large, but um, the sewing kit was inside. So um, thank you again, Anne. And, um, Anne has, an, when the pandemic is over, Anne has an amazing quilt shop in Wisconsin. Not only is it a quilt shop, but half of it is a retreat center. I've taught there before. Lovely bedrooms, lovely modern bedrooms, a great big classroom, nice kitchen area. The shop and the retreat center were built from the ground up a few years ago. So it's just beautiful and I can't wait to visit there again. So um, now, over to Danny's portion of the show because he's got some uh, tidbits to tell you about the the new Discord channel. So yeah, so what I was talking last time was about the Discord. It w it's a place where I hang out with my friends and we generally meet up every night or pretty much twenty hours out of twenty four hours a day. <laughs> and um, one of the great things about it is 
we don't all have to play video games to be sitting there. Like the other night I was in there doing work and I would just sit in there and talk to them and made me think that would be a great idea for some people that are sewing made by themselves or in an area where you're not around other people you could sew currently with what's going on. And so we set it up. I put our rules in there from our Facebook group, altered it a little bit. And what it is, is it's a place you can come. Think like a Zoom call. I think it's an easy one that people are using currently. Mm -hmm. So with Discord, it's people think it's voice chat only, but it's not. It actually has a camera feature, which lets you say if you have an iPad or your phone or if you have a webcam, you can actually turn your camera on and you could have like eight people in the channel talking. And once the person who's talking, their camera pops to the main of uh, the screen. So say if Sarah's talking, her camera will be up. I interject my camera's gonna pop up. And not saying you need a camera because you don't need a camera because I'd say in my group of friends, I would say less than half use cameras. I'm one of them that do not use cameras because I don't have a webcam currently on my computer. Uh, but you could still interact very easily. And Sarah in her hands has a, a device that I would recommend if you do to use this, especially if you're while you're sewing, it'd be a wireless headset because what a wireless headset does, it lets you fully sew, you have full access to your hands, you can talk, you can listen. Um, Different headsets have different options, like you can mute your mic by sometimes there's a button on the side, another headset where you slide it up and it goes, so if you don't wanna talk, um, you can mute yourself and just listen in. My friends call this the helicopter pilot headset because sometimes when I have business meetings, I like to wear this and uh, they sort of make fun of me for it, but um, you do not need a headset, right? Nope. You nope. can use a cell phone or an iPad. Yeah, so correct? if you have a mobile device, an iPad, a cell phone, <laughs> Um, a tablet in general, you can do that Discord on that. And uh, I wish I, I linked in the, the video itself in our comments section below. It'll have a tutorial which I found on YouTube. The guy made a, a really nice mobile tutorial. And then he also has a PC tutorial or a, a Mac or Macintosh, whatever you may use. But on there, he shows step by step how you set it up, how you make it work, how you can do different features and functions. And it seemed like a pretty easy to follow one, so that's why I chose it. And I, I think a lot of people could do this. I'm seeing some. I'll post this real quick. Question, go ahead, sir. Uh, Stephanie says, is Discord basically always live? Like you don't have to have a Zoom link, you can just tune in whenever and see who is there? Yes, absolutely. So Discord is an app you have on your phone, your computer, once you open this app up, it's like a, think like the Facebook group where it's always there and you just wanna to go to it and use it. That's what it is. So if someone's sitting in there, you can see, you can view the app while someone else is in there and not be part of it. So say if you see Sarah in there, you wanna go jump in and talk to her, you can. Or if you see no one there and you don't wanna go in there, you don't have to join. And it can be running in the background. It's very low um, data usage as well. Um, they make a really good product. I've gone through a whole plethora of voice communication platforms since me and my friends do game often. Um, and this was the best one and it's been the best one for a while. Is there any kind of uh, notification when people are in the, in the group or do you just have to check it yourself? No, so you would have to check it yourself in that aspect, but there's a couple things you can do. Um, they, someone asked, is Discord free? Discord is 100% free. There's no cost, no monthly fees. Um, you can buy a subscription to upgrade to a paid per month. I currently don't do it, but it'll give you better quality voice or you don't notice it. I mean, a few of my friends have it. You really can't tell the difference. That's why it's not, not something I'm doing. Um, but what were you saying, sir? I was thrown off by that question. Uh, notifications. If oh, notifications. Sure. Room. So say you joined discord once and now you're part of our server. Go, keep talking. I'm just, um, now you're part of our server. You can have it where your notifications will pop up. And I think it even works for your phone because the great thing about this is you'll make friends. And once you make friends, you can friend them on Discord. And then your friends, it's almost like a chat message. So like say my friend gets, kind of? yeah, well, not even. Because say you get on, Sarah, and you say, hey, you know, I'm be sewing this. You want to jump on or I'm, if you're free, you can get a message. Like I'll get messages on my phone notifications that says, hey, uh, my buddy Greg's playing a game right now. Do you want to join? I'm like, sure. Or in the chat on Discord, you'll have an area where you can actually chat and talk to each other. Um, and you can add someone. So if you're, so if I add Sarah and I write a message, she'll, if you choose to, you can get a notification, go to your phone 
or whatever device. You can also say if you're not interested, so you don't want to get notifications. You don't want to be bothered by a stuff that you want to use it when you want to use it. You don't want to be using it when someone tells you to use it or notifies you. You can, on the server itself, when you right click it, it'll say mute server. And that way you won't get notifications if someone tags you or puts a, a notification that goes out to everyone. Okay, there was a great question from Shelly. How do you keep trolls out? Uh, well, there's a few options. If you have an admin or a moderator in the Discord, you can let them know and they can kick them out and ban them permanently. Um, but say someone joined in, there's no one around, like, what do I do? One, you can right click them. Or if on your phone, I have to look, I'm not it's sure. It's okay, you that. don't have to, you could just. Okay, well, you just, you, I assume you just click them on the phone as well and you can mute them. And that will, you'll never hear what they're saying. You, you won't be bothered by them. Um, do you another... want the computer to slide over? No, I was just trying to put some oh, questions sure. that people were asking. Uh, Kim says, do you sign into a specific room so it doesn't get jumbled by so many users? Yeah, so currently I have set up three sewing rooms, uh, a photography room, and I think an AFK channel. So an AFK channel is, say you're doing something and you're away, I think I have it set for 10 minutes. Once you're away for 10 minutes, you're not doing nothing, not talking, not interacting, it'll automatically put you in the channel. So say you left your headset on and then you walk away from the room, you go eat dinner and you come back you'll be in the AFK channel. And one of the great things about that is if you left your microphone on, say you're talking to someone else, you didn't realize you're still in the Discord, it'll automatically move you in there and prevent you know people from listening to your conversation if you left it on. Um, does it work on an iPad? Kathy wants to know. Yeah, I looked up, it does work on iPads, um, iPhones, Android devices. Um, you can use your home Wi-Fi, you can use your cell phone data. Obviously, I would at your own risk, you can check and monitor it. If you were to use it one night, see how much data you use if you're on limited data plan. Uh, you don't have to turn the video portion on, so it doesn't use too much. Okay, so just to recap, just a few points that I wrote down that I wanted to go over before we move on to a different topic. Um, so the good thing about Discord is you can talk to members in real time. So either just voice only, or if you perhaps are sewing something and you wanna ask someone a question about what you're working on, you can have voice and video. It's up to you. Danny said um, about less than half of his friends use the video option and yep. he just does voice, so. And also if you don't want to install something on there, you can actually use Discord through your browser. Um, it's not the best interface, but it is something if you wanna just test it out before you install an app. So ask, is it virus free? I've never heard anyone having problems with viruses with Discord. How many years have you been using Discord for? I would say at least three years. Okay. At least, yeah. Um, it's uh, open 20, the room is open 20, or the rooms are open 24 hours a day, so you can drop in anytime or check who's there uh, if you feel like talking. Um, unfortunately, we cannot have an admin available in the rooms, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so we're going to see how it goes if the rooms, if we hear that the rooms are being abused at all, or if um, unkind discussions are going on, uh, obviously we reserve the right to take the rooms down and get rid of them. Um, Danny and I will be dropping by occasionally, but just- I wanna make know. a, for me personally, I wanna make a weekly commitment, or at least once a, a show I'm on, maybe prior to the show, after the show, or sometime I'll go in there. If anybody has questions, I'll be in my own channel, anyone can join in. Um, you can ask me questions about anything. Um, a lot of people have live streaming questions, which I'm more than happy to answer. Um, I saw a question here I wanted to answer. Um, by so quick. I guess that's, that's, those are the only points that I made on my outline. Obviously, uh, we feel that everyone's always been constructive and kind in the Facebook group, and we're just hoping that same uh, scenario transfers over to Discord. Um, yeah, well, you know, another thing too, we can um, promote moderators and give them powers to um, remove people from the channels, kick them, it could be temporary bans, in case it was not called for. Um, but there's different options we can choose to use to help moderate with that. And if people are interested in moderating, we'll give it about a week and I'll ask people that are maybe more consistent on there if they wanna be a moderator. And um, I'll give you an easy 100 question survey. If you pass that, we'll get you <laughs> signed on. <laughs> All right, uh, so moving on, if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, in the Facebook group and you, or you can always email us. Uh, Sarah at sosweetness.com is my email address, Sarah with no H. And any Discord related questions, I'll kick those over and Daniel will answer those. Eugenia said that she uses click to talk um, I think the term on the app is called push to talk uh, and that's what you can set up if you're on your computer, 
I think I use caps lock, but you can press a button, then your mic is live. You let go of the button, your mic's not live anymore. And if we get a lot of people, say you have 20 people to a channel, I might make a channel locked only to press the talk because if you have 20 people talking at once, it's very... Or if the sewing machine's running, you don't want to listen right, to someone. Right, it really depends. On yeah, machine, on sound. So. If you have yeah. a sound that's disturbing people, yeah, that might be a great option. I okay. saw someone before mention it, but it's gonna be etiquette. If someone you know requests that you press the talk, uh, they're not taking it personally against you. It's just maybe there's a background noise, a TV on. Every microphone's got a different quality. When you're dealing with gaming headsets, they generally have noise reduction microphones. So if Sarah's talking on it, hopefully a background noise is not being picked up. It's not like a live mic we have for our show where it's just open and you hear a lot. With those, it's noise canceling microphones. Okay, so the link to our Discord is in the description and Danny also placed a link to a tutorial if you need help getting it set two up. Two tutorials, two video mobile, tutorials. PC, yep. and as well as the Discord FAQ section. So if you wanna go right to their website and look at it and read about it, they have a lot of information, could be helpful. Okay, super awesome. And we look forward to chatting with you live uh, in Discord in the future. So we'd like to now invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. We're really happy that you're joining us for this live show. And even if you're watching the recording later on in the week or um, sometimes I get emails from people that are watching shows uh, two or three years in the past. So um, even older shows are full of helpful information. So we're so glad that you're here and thanks so much for watching the show. Real quick, sir, mm -hmm. before you jump ahead, I know I don't think we mentioned this on our, our YouTube channel uh, for live streams, but I did see people in the comments say, you know, I, I just forgot about the show. I didn't get a notification. On YouTube, they have a little bell right below the video and it's usually on the right side. And if you click that bell, when we are going live or a post comes available, it'll give you a notification. And I believe it's like 15 minutes before. So if you're worried about missing our show, you can click that bell and it'll automatically notify you to remind you. Thank you for that. Um, we'll kick it back over to you for your pick of the week then. Uh, my pick of the week is an awesome widget bag made by Shannon Gale. Um, if you don't know what that is, that is uh, Super Mario fabric. Uh, I thought it was awesome. I loved her pictures. I loved everything about this bag. Um, I thought it was super cool with the colors. Look at inside the little star yeah, like, hidden in there. So I cool. thought that was awesome. And it looks like, she, was that, uh, what's that called when you sew it on? Applique. Applique, yeah. And I don't know if you you all caught the, the nylon strapping fed underneath the entire bag. I thought that was a super cool modification. So I, I didn't know. see that, actually. You want to put the picture back up one more time? For you, Sarah? Yes. No. I think it might have gone by too quick. Not this picture, I think yeah. it was the second picture. Okay. So just keep your eye out for oh, see there the, it is. Yeah, the yeah. side and the oh, bottom of the cool. bag. Yeah, that's really awesome. I and so would she sew that on there? Is that how it attaches? Uh, I'm assuming she did. Um, yeah. Hmm. Pretty cool. And it really blends in, especially if you use uh, black thread with the, the black nylon Even strapping. like the, the triangle portion you see on the top half that she applied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very creative awesome use. Bag. Yeah. Great job, Shannon. She's made a lot of awesome um, widget bags. All right, so I'm going to announce the winner of last week's giveaway, and then I'll be answering some questions live. Um, last week's winner was Eleanor Mendoza, so congratulations to Eleanor. I've contacted Eleanor on social media and just waiting to hear back so that I can get her her prize, and there's another giveaway at the end of the show. So Danny's going to post some questions on the screen. Um, I'll answer as many as I can live, um, but of course you can always feel free to email me, and I'm happy to help you out uh, individually via email. Um, Hold on. Oh. This was it has a mix from the other one because the Facebook was late. Oh, oh, oh. gotcha, gotcha. Well, okay, if they're good you go, questions, you, go. you can put uh, some but old ones on the screen too. Um, Barbara says, "Will you ever have a solo long on a different platform than Facebook?" Um, I've thought long and hard about this in the past. It's just because of the nature of Facebook. It's just easier to host uh, the solo long in the Facebook group. And I've I've talked to some of my other um, pattern designer friends for some other ideas. Facebook has a lot of uh, things like uh, albums. You can post pictures and albums for the weekly tasks. Um, it's just an easier way of sharing information and without having our own forum on our website, we really don't have a, a good way of getting you the sew along without Facebook. You know what's weird, sir? Mm -hmm. I probably should have mentioned this. Discord allows you to have, <laughs> I mean, literally like a Facebook group. You can have, you can put the pictures, you can put files. You could okay. um, put dedicated chat channels for sets. I'm not saying something we would do, 
But I mean, there it's got a lot of options and maybe who knows what the future brings. Uh, I'm super interested in pursuing that in the future, but as we've just kind of landed with yeah, Discord and I know it's new to a lot of people, we'll, we'll check that out, see how the Discord group goes and perhaps in future we can do something maybe in both because I know there's a lot of people that uh, watch the show on YouTube that don't have a Facebook account and would prefer not to have a Facebook account. That's completely understandable. If you'd still like to participate, but without having access to the group, uh, you can also email me. I do have the scheduled, uh, the list of tasks and um, it's a PDF document and I'm happy to email that to anyone who is interested. April says, question, I want to get into quilting, but I'm a bit lost. How did you first learn quilting and where would you recommend someone start if they've never done it before? So that's a really great question. When I first started sewing in as an adult, I had a couple of friends that were really into quilting. I was super confused by all of the different uh, items that you needed to make a quilt, all the different types of batting, all the tools that you needed. I highly recommend my friend Pat Sloan. She has a Facebook group. Um, Pat Sloan is her name. You can find that on Facebook. I also highly recommend subscribing to her newsletter. She has a lot of different skill levels of uh, helpful quilt information and free quilt alongs. Um, she had a quilt along this summer that she's been working on and um, yeah, she's just the best as far as sharing information. Um, so those are two places to start. Um, if you need more information than that, um, feel free to email me and I can send you, send you some more links um, as far as getting started with quilting. Um, yeah. Uh, Julie says, Sarah, will you consider making a rolled handle template? I do have, uh, maybe it was a year and a half ago, I did a free video on my YouTube channel for a rolled handle and I did make a template. I think I made two different styles of template, maybe a curved one and one that was more rectangular. You can find that on the YouTube channel, um, rolled handle. And within that video, there will also be a link to my website for downloading the PDF template for the rolled handle, the ends of the handle. Kate says, will there be a Sew Sweetness pouch swap? We have done Sew Sweetness swaps in the past. Uh, we decided not to do any more for the rest of the year, including Christmas, unfortunately, just because the state of um, the Postal Service uh, packages with huge delays. I feel like it's been getting better lately. I'm not sure if you agree. I've noticed that I've been getting packages uh, from the Postal Service really quickly and when I check tracking for customers, not that I check every single customer's tracking, but they seem to be moving along rather promptly compared to earlier this summer. Um, but in light of that, we decided not to do a Christmas swap this year. Hopefully things will uh, improve in the future and we can do another swap in uh, 2020, maybe a swap or two, but um, again, it depends on uh, the worldwide situation. Bonnie says, question, when beginning a quilt, can you use a layer cake, jelly roll, charm pack, etc.? Are there certain quilts that call for one of those? I could never pick fabrics on my own. So uh, my friend Gudrun, her pattern company is called GE Designs. She has a lot of quilt patterns for pre-cuts such as jelly rolls. Um, there are lots of books that you can find on Amazon for specific pre-cuts, lots of books for jelly rolls or layer cakes or charm packs. So you can just do a search on Amazon quilt, book, uh, jelly roll or whatever, whatever, what have you. And you can find um, books. Uh, there's so many resources for quilts online, but uh, hopefully those are a few good tips to get you started. Um, Francisca says, do you give the size for the Chicago screws on the pattern? So uh, I, I do have a free video on my YouTube channel talking about Chicago screws. I've used, I've tried two different sizes in the past, three eighths of an inch and a quarter of an inch and I found that at least for the projects that I'm working on and the layers including the interfacing uh, the quarter inch Chicago screws worked a little bit better for me but you might want to buy a few in each size and see how they're working out for your project but Chicago screws are really nice because they give the look of rivets but you don't need any extra tools or um, presses you just uh, screw the screws in using a I think it's a Phillips screwdriver with the four with plus? the X, with the plus? Yeah, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was a part of the other one. That's why I, I, I got all three of us together. Okay, gotcha. Nursa. Um, yeah, I get, yeah, I guess my answer would be the same as, uh, you know, uh, I do like the quarter of an inch, but you might want to just get both sizes and, and try them out. Kim says, how do we join a sew along? So um, the link for the Rockstar Bag sew along is in the description. It will take you to a post. Oh, did you link. add that into it? 
I did. Oh, well, I deleted that. Did you really? Dead serious. I thought it was a mistake after I was editing it. You probably should tell me <laughs> since I do schedule them. I know. I just assumed I could. Are you be, you're totally being <laughs> I'm serious? I'm dead serious. Okay. Facebook, I, I definitely deleted. Uh, YouTube, if you did that, it's still there. Facebook after the show, I will be adding that back. Okay, uh, so sorry, I lied. It's If you're watching on YouTube, the Rockstar Bag So Long is not in the description, but after the show, we will put that back in. <laughs> I really thought it was the old one. I'm like, how did this get in there? I clearly scheduled it without that in there, and I'm looking, okay. checking the post, and I'm like, what is that? Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so it's gone. Sorry for the delay. After the show, we will have the link in the recording of the Rockstar Bag uh, for the So Long. All the information is in that, in that link. Oh, gosh. Uh, Ingrid says, how can I keep my rivets from smashing when installing them? Um, I would just say um, make a little sample swatch with perhaps uh, your fa a little scrap of fabric attached to foam interfacing and then just practice a couple times of finding that optimal pressure because you can definitely push, uh, I use a tabletop rivet press, you can definitely press too hard and kind of crunch uh, the rivets, uh, smash the top a little bit. And I find that, um, I'm not sure if all rivet presses are the same, but I find that in my press, um, one side looks nicer than the other. So I technically, I um, traditionally like to have the right side of my fabric face down on my press. Uh, your press might not be like that, but if you do a few tests on that sample swatch, then you can find the optimal press pressure and then which way you should orient your fabric when sliding into the, the press. Um, Jennifer says, um, can you wash a bag made of just cork and do you wash your bags once made no matter what the material is? So I believe I've never put a bag made with cork in the washing machine, but I'm pretty sure Michelle Graham has before probably several times. Um, the, due to the nature of the cork, it is water resistant. So if you get your cork bag dirty, you can wipe it clean with a damp cloth. I realize that might not be applicable if your bag is, for instance, uh, mostly quilting cotton with a little bit of cork to it. If you get the quilting cotton part dirty, I can understand why you might want to wash it. Um, you might uh, consider just letting it air dry. Um, if you do have to put it in the washing machine, um, what else was I going to say about washing? If you think you might be washing your bags often, or at least a few times, you might consider pre-washing your fabrics before you cut and sew with them, um, just to be sure there will not be shrinkage. Most quality quilt shop fabrics encounter minimal, minimal shrinkage, shrinkage but I've purchased fabrics before, such as, for example, from Walmart, and I did not pre-wash them, and unfortunately I used them for shorts for my kids, and they shrunk so badly uh, the kids couldn't even wear them which was kind of sad but um did you it, lower my chair by the way i just noticed that wash, Sarah. i didn't touch I'm, your chair. I'm clearly almost a foot taller than you and yeah we're like the same same uh, it might be a conspiracy lisa says day trip wallets i'm struggling with zippers around the corners are there any helpful tips to make it easier double-sided tape um i'm already it's gonna cut off at oh some point okay here. I, i'm already notching but the zipper sometimes goes goofy when i add the uh, lining panels. Would it hurt to extend the zipper length a quarter of an inch or half an inch? So first off, make sure you're using a handbag zipper for that project. Um, I'm sure you probably are, but I just felt like I needed to say that based on questions in the past. Um, you can use a stiletto to, or your precision turning tool to help you through the corners if you'd rather not use your fingers. The curved edges will sort of curl a little bit while you're working on the project um, and when you're adding the lining. I just use a ton of wonder clips, especially through the curves and the wonder clips tend to hold it nice and sort of flat before you get it to your sewing machine. And the wonder clips also kind of hold the zipper teeth away from um, your intended seam area. Um, the curling is normal during construction. And then when you get everything turned right side out and top stitched, uh, it tends to settle down. So I guess those are my tips, but if you need some more, feel free to email me. Valerie says, I want to make small leather bags. Can you recommend some uh, that have acrylic templates? Um, my favorite smaller project, I'm not looking, sure if you're looking for a pouch or bag. I've seen a bunch made with leather and cork is uh, the Zeppelin pouch from Minikin season one. Um, I'm planning on making a few this year for gifts. Small leather bags. Uh, the the free Baker Street bag and Oriole crossbody bag. I've made both of those with 
cork and you can also make them with leather. Those both have videos. I'm trying to think what else. Um, if anyone has any other suggestions for small leather bag, let us know in the comments and Danny will search for some of those. Maybe we can post a few on the screen uh, to get some more suggestions out there. Terry says, have you used waterproof canvas in any bags, any hints? Um, it's been some years since I have. Um, do use either a Teflon foot or a walking foot for working with that. Um, I don't know. It's probably been uh, eight or so years before I've used the waterproof canvas. Um, unfortunately, at that time, I did not know about the Teflon foot, so I had a rather trying time working on that bag with the waterproof canvas. But um, yeah, I haven't used it extensively, so I guess I don't have a huge amount of tips for it. Crystal says, zipper overlays, do you have a how-to? So uh, actually I have not done a video yet for any kind of zipper overlay. So I'm gonna write myself a note. I keep a sort of a spreadsheet with uh, Social Sunday ideas that I have not yet um, created a demonstration for. So I'm definitely going to add that to the list. Uh, if you're not familiar with a zipper overlay, a zipper, uh, do I have a bag over here I can grab to share? I do not. Uh, a zipper overlay is basically uh, a little strip that goes around the outside of a zipper, uh, either a rectangle or um, a rectangle with curved edges, and it just goes on top. Um, it, it sort of provides a nice finish to the the area where the zipper is, just goes around the outside. And I've seen a lot of them done with uh, either cork or leather, and it just looks really, uh, really upscale, I think. Um, Lisa says, what is a good pattern to use my wax canvas on? Um, again, I've seen a bunch of wax canvas Zeppelin pouches. Um, oh gosh, I think I've even seen a Park Sling backpack made with wax canvas. Wax canvas is really great. I used um, a little bit of it on the persimmon dumpling pouches for the accents. Wax canvas is good for either the whole bag or you can use it for straps and accents. Um, let's see. Steven wants to know, is the Facebook group name the same as the YouTube channel, please? So I think in the Facebook group, if you do a search for, let me check really quick so I can give you accurate information. Um, if you go on Facebook and look for So Sweetness, uh, if you start typing in So Sweetness, um, the first one in the list, just So Sweetness, is our Facebook page, which is our public page. And the group is the second one down. It's called So Sweetness Sewing Patterns. And the, the group is a closed group on Facebook, which means um, only members of the group can see the posts posted in the group, the photographs posted in the group. We found that members preferred the group to be a closed group just so that, um, for example, their non-sewing friends were not seeing all of the things they were posting and so on or the things that they were commenting on. Um, so that's why the group is closed. And having a closed group also allows us um, to have a little bit of extra admin on the group, we see everyone who asks to join, they have to answer three really easy questions and we can make sure everything is in line with our goals of being helpful and kind. And uh, by having a closed group, we just have more control over that. Gail says, is there a person that fixes old quilts? Um, I don't personally know of one, but if anyone does, let us know in the comments and we'll get that posted up on the screen. Delia says, what's the ba best bag pattern to start with for the first time? Baker Street bag. Mm -hmm. Baker Street bag. Uh, the Easy Leather Hobo bag is also a good one. Both of those come with free videos um, and they're also free patterns. But yeah, Baker Street bag is probably the number one that we recommend for beginning bag makers. Debbie says, what about a coating to protect the cork? Um, so the cork is actually treated by the manufacturer with uh, a UV protectant and a scotch guard um yeah i, I suppose uh, that's as much protection uh, that you'll need but it is treated by the manufacturer um, the uv protectant um, keeps the colors nice and bright um, especially on the bright colors of cork like the candy red ray says what is the difference between a handbag zipper and just zipper tape with two ends um so that's a great question so the handbag zipper has uh since sandy's on the show i can get up and move around a little bit. So I'm gonna grab, let's see. See you, Sarah. Touch that chair. We're going on a one-man show. I've been waiting for this moment for a while. All right, 
I guess I'll just stand for a minute uh, <laughs> in case I need to get up again. So now you're um, taller than me. I definitely conspiracy. So a handbag zipper traditionally comes from the store. Uh, we like the by any hand, handbag zippers. Um, most of them either have one pull or two pulls and they have the metal zipper stops on them. If you're using a zipper by the yard, it just comes uh, like a cut piece and you need to install the zipper heads on the zipper tape. So both of these are considered handbag zippers. Um, just one is already with the pull on it and one you need to install the zipper head and we sell both of these options um, in our shop. Uh, the zipper tape on the handbag zipper is about um, an inch and a quarter wide, in case you were wondering. Mary says, I have friends here in Virginia that fix and work on old quilts. Um, perhaps we can get Mary connected with, uh, gosh. I, yeah, there's, I, I'll actually listed three. Few? Charlie uh, mentioned one and I forgot the first one. I figured I'd just send it out right away because they're okay. all, if they're watching, they could see it and you could pause it and go back to it. Okay, so you might want to at um, one of the people that uh, had recommendations for that and perhaps you can talk after the show and get connected for fixing your old quilts. Laura says, does your cinnamon cork have a metallic color behind the holes? If so, what color? So I don't think, I, I don't have any cinnamon cork in the studio, but the, I'm not sure how to explain it. It's not I believe really, it does. It's not really metallic. It is sort of a, the cork is bonded to a backing fabric and there's sort of like a film of color underneath the actual cork portion that's the same color or a close color to the yeah. cinnamon. So it's not exactly metallic. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain it. Can you think of a better way to explain it than I did? Mm. It's definitely not metallic though. Perhaps, almost think like faux leather almost. Perhaps, you know, it's in got our that sheen. perhaps in our pictures, those areas picked up the light a little bit, but um, in person, the cinnamon cork is not metallic at all. Teresa says, is there a list of suggested dyes for a rivet press? So my favorite are obviously the rivets. Um, I like, um, I do have a, a hole punch for mine, my rivet press as well. Grommets I don't use often, but I, I use in a few different sizes. Um, if you check on my YouTube channel, my Rivet Press video, and you can just type in Rivet Press in the search on the Soul Sweetness YouTube channel. My Rivet Press video, I talk about all the different dyes that I have for my press and all the specific sizes. So if you're looking for size information, it would be in that video as well. Linda says, what is best, uh, what foot is best for sewing with vinyl? Um, I use my Teflon foot. Uh, you could also use a walking foot instead if you prefer. See if I, I don't know if I have my tough on foot over here. No, I don't. Nope. Um, Maria says, is it possible to apply uh, Decoville to vinyl? Um, it is either uh, Decoville light or Decoville heavy. You might, I'm not sure if you're using other interfacings, but um, you might want to do a little test swatch. Um, make sure you use a pressing cloth between the fabric and your iron and just, uh, see how the fabric reacts to having um, the interfacing, uh, fusible interfacing attached to it. I've done it in the past and in most cases it's fine, but doing a test swatch just saves you um, a lot of headaches. Um, let's see. Dorothy says, what do you do if the Teflon foot still sticks to the vinyl? Um, Someone in the comments said put tissue paper over it. Tissue paper, I ha actually I have used tissue paper in the, in the past. Um, tissue paper, tearaway paper, or um, at the doctor's office, uh, they have that sort of tissue on top of the table where you sit on, something like that so that you can tear away um, the tissue after you're done working. Shaylin says, how often do you change your needle when sewing vinyl? So I, I generally change my needle after I complete um, an entire bag. If I'm working on pouches, maybe I'll let it go for two or three pouches, but I just feel more comfortable, especially working with all the layers of interfacing. If I'm using cork in the project, I just feel more comfortable switching out to a brand new needle, a nice sharp needle um, after I finished my bag project. Um, let's see, Jennifer says, have you ever used double welt pockets in a bag? Um, I don't think I have, and I definitely don't have a tutorial for that. So I'm gonna write that one down as well. 
Um, Kathleen says, I made a park sling in wax canvas. It's so great. Uh, yeah, it's really nice to sew with wax canvas. And I like that each piece looks totally different when it's sewn into the project, just because the wax canvas picks up all the areas that you're working with. If you're folding it, uh, if it gets a little crunched up in your sewing machine. And I really like the unique look that wax canvas gives. Ruth says, what patterns would you suggest for burlap? I just acquired a bunch of burlap sacks. I'd like to upcycle into bags or pouches. Perhaps the Easy Leather Hobo, the body of the bag um, burlap. Um, I did see someone make a feed sack into, I think the grab and go sleeve from Minikin season one. And I think they said they had a hard time turning it, but then again, the grab and go is a a uh, smaller thinner project but um the easy leather hobo bag just leapt into my mind immediately just because it's sort of a an open project and it's a larger one um kim says can i enlarge the coalition duffel bag um you could enlarge it um you might need to take it to your cop, cop local copy shop though just because the pattern piece for the bag is already quite large and um yeah, I don't know how I'd do that on my home printer scanner if I had to enlarge it, but I believe a copy shop uh, would be the best option for that. Jess says, um, hello, I was wondering if you had any general tips or advice for starting out selling bags. Thanks again for all you both do. So I have a, a video on my YouTube channel, how to sell handmade bags. So you can just type that in the search. Uh, we did do the video maybe a, a year and a half or so ago, um, but I feel like the information is still relevant. I had a panel discussion with Let's see if I can name the names. Ready? Mm -hmm. Shannon Gale. Okay. Christy from Rockstar, Rock Paper Scissors. Rock Baby Scissors. Rock Baby Scissors. Uh, Christy Love You So. Uh, Christy's. Okay. Um, Bethany Sullivan also and, participated. And one other person, um, she made the guitar cases. Um, Deanna. Dina. Yeah, Dina. You're good. So in the panel discussion, we talked about selling bags and the reason I chose each of those um, ladies for the panel was they each sold their bags in a different way. Um, uh, a closed Facebook group, um, consignment to a local sh um, gift shop. Um, My Instagram. pick of the week was actually Shannon Gale from the show actually. Yep. So check out that video. I think you'll find it helpful. Yep. Let's see, Rosemary says, is there a special trick to getting the zipper foot on the Juki uh, TL-98? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'd never considered it. Um, if you're having trouble though, feel free to email me and I'm happy to help if I can. Uh, Sarah at SoSweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. I don't know, I just, I'm just thinking through the steps and it, it really just unscrewed and screwed back on, but uh, let me know if you're having trouble. Jennifer says, does Sarah have a favorite hardware supplier for zippers and other hardware? So we actually got, finally, after two months, we got our hardware order. Um, so we are our own favorites. <laughs> SoSweetness.com, by the way. SoSweetness.com, there's a tab in the shop for hardware. We also sell zippers. We sell handbag zippers as well as zippers by the yard. And I didn't tell you, but uh, I ordered. What a um, surprise. <laughs> Let me phone that one in. I ordered a few different zippers by the yard because we've had requests for um, gunmetal teeth, uh, rose gold teeth, and gold teeth, as well as some coordinating zipper pulls. So we're gonna start with a few and see how it goes in those different color iterations, and we'll add more. But Danny always says the zipper pulls sell really well, so I figured it would be okay, and I just got a few to start, so. Rebecca says, can you scotch guard fabric pieces before assembling a bag? Can scotch guard uh, fabrics be ironed? So I have used scotch guard in the past. I did use it on the finished bag. Um, from what I can recall, the scotch guard um, aerosol container says to pretest your uh, spray on the fabric before using. Um, if you're interested, there's a video on my YouTube channel. You can just search scotch guard and the video will pop up. Echo says, is there a beginner level bag for organizing sewing supplies for travel? Um, the, let me pop up again. I really love the Amethyst Project bag for sewing supplies. Let me open it up. And I know there's a bag inside because I opened it up recently. Um, 
you can put your either quilt blocks over here in this section under the parachute clip or if you're taking bag making related supplies to a friend's house or a retreat your sewing supplies or your pre-cut pieces can go here there's a zipper area for uh, scissors um, seam ripper or whatever what have you if you need room for some of your marking tools like your friction pens that can go here and there's also a zipper pouch for other small items, perhaps Fritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. If you're looking for something smaller than this, perhaps the Creative Maker Supply Case. It comes in three different sizes. And if you wish, you can modify um, the pages inside to hold, uh, you know, have uh, slip pockets or um, anything else. Are you calling it on the questions? Yes, ma'am. All right, Danny's calling it on the questions, so I apologize if it did not get to your question live. Uh, but we'll be back again next Sunday with uh, my review show. I'll be talking about different notions, fabrics, uh, a tutorial video. Uh, so stay tuned for that next Sunday. One last thing, I have a, a giveaway for tonight. Uh, the giveaway prize is a $40 gift certificate to SoSweetness.com. You can use your gift certificate for PDF patterns and videos, hardware, since we just got the hardware in, zippers, whatever you choose. So my question is, all you have to do is answer my question in the comments, either on Facebook or YouTube on this exact video that you're watching our show. What's, uh, Danny chose the question for tonight. So I put it right away. I wanna see the answer so we can get out of here. <laughs> I'm sorta hungry, I'm not gonna lie. We didn't eat dinner yet, which is not usual for us, but uh, Danny was watching football and I just, I wasn't on top of things today. So my question is, what is your fav favorite meal for dinner? What's your favorite meal? Oh, I wasn't ready to answer that one, sir. I want you to answer first. Give me a uh, half a second. We live in Chicago, so I super love deep dish pizza. Mm. Uh, if not deep dish pizza, I've been making soup like several times a week since we've been in quarantine. So um, one of my soups probably. I made a black bean soup with uh, peppers and tomatoes today. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I've been thinking about it in the past couple weeks. My mom made one recently. I didn't get to taste it, but a pot roast. My mom used to make it when we were kids often. Sarah's not too much into that kind of food. So well, I... I just don't eat meat anymore, so that's the only reason. Even when you did eat meat, I don't think you'd ever make pot roast. No, I didn't eat... When I did eat meat, I really didn't eat red meat, so... So, it's a great thing to have. I wish, you know, I is could it, partake is, in it more. Is it red meat in pot roast, or no? It, I believe so. It's, what, I think, chuck kind of roast or it? something. Is it pork? No, it's, it's beef. It's beef? Okay, yeah. then that's red meat. Okay. But the potatoes and the carrots, oh, gosh. All I'm right. find a place that's selling it right now. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for joining us for, for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week. Check out that information for Discord and we'll get the information, yep. uh, the links in Facebook right after the show. Yep. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye everyone. See ya.